Tuesday Tales time. Today we're going to read a story about a rock. It doesn't sound very exciting, does it? But this rock has led a really incredible life. He's done lots of different things. He's even flown. So let's take a look and see what the story is about. The title is Old Rock is Not Boring. And the author, do you remember what the author does? Writes the words, that's right. The author is Deb Paludi. Here's our rock with a smile on his face. Now there are some other creatures that are gonna be in the book too. We have a hummingbird. We have a beetle here on top of rock. And then this pine tree, it's hard to see, but he's got a little smile on his face here. So those are our characters in our story today. Let's check out Rock's life and see if he is in fact not boring. Old Rock had been sitting in the same spot at the edge of a clearing in the middle of a pine forest for as long as anyone could remember. And even before that, Being a rock seems awfully boring, said Tall Pine. You sit in the same spot day after day, said Spotted Beetle. It's a very nice spot, said Old Rock. Don't you want to go anywhere, asked Hummingbird. I've flown all over the world and sipped the nectar of exotic flowers. I would surely be bored if I could not fly. I flew once, said Old Rock. Gosh, said Tall Pine. How, asked Spotted Beetle. Rocks don't fly, said Hummingbird. Old Rock told them about the time in the beginning when darkness was all around. And then I erupted out of a volcano and soared through a fiery sky into the bright light of a new world. Look, Rock was in this volcano and then he erupted out. He's in the sky, he really is flying. So it was just one time, said Hummingbird, and now you're sitting here, said Tall Pine, being boring, said Spotted Beetle. I'm not bored, said Old Rock. Do you want to see more? Don't you want to see what's out there, said Spotted Beetle. If I climb to the tip-top branch of tall pine tree, I might see a deer mouse nibbling seeds in a nearby tree. Or watch sailing ships across the big lake. Old Rock said, I've seen a lot. Old Rock told them about the time a group of friendly dinosaurs lumbered by munching every leaf in sight. Then, many years later, a not-so-friendly dinosaur came looking for a meal. Look at this. The dinosaur says, have you seen this dinosaur? And Big Rock says, no, I haven't seen her. And then the dinosaur is hiding behind Big Rock and she says, thanks. Time passed and the world chilled. Ooh, got really snowy. Big Rock is shivering. Which wasn't too bad because Old Rock took a ride in a glacier and toured the land. Look at that, there he is in the glacier. Once the glacier melted, it left me perched at the top of a ridge and I could see the place where the sky touches the earth. My, you have seen a lot, said Spotted Beetle. How unusual, said Hummingbird. Yes, but that was ages ago, said Tall Pine. Aren't you bored now? 
Don't you want to move? My limbs flutter gently in a breeze and dance wildly when the wind blows. I've never danced, said Old Rock, but I'm pretty good at doing somersaults. Old Rock revealed that after teetering on the ridge for a while, the ground rumbled and I tumbled and stumbled down, 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 down into a valley. Grasses grew, mastodons roamed, and lakes formed. Look at who's sitting on Old Rock. Old Rock says to the mastodon, shouldn't you be roaming? <laughs> I never knew a rock had moves like that, said Tall Pine. I wish I could have seen those things, said Spotted Beetle. What happened next, asked Hummingbird. A pine forest sprouted up around me. One day, a strong breeze shook a pine cone loose. From the pine cone, a seed fell onto the forest floor. I watched that seedling grow to be the tall pine who dances in the wind and keeps me company. Sometimes a spotted beetle wanders along to report all that he sees. And every so often, the loveliest hummingbird stops to rest after a long flight. And she describes the most amazing places she's visited. It's a very nice spot, said Old Rock. He described all of his friends, Tall Pine, the Spotted Beetle, and the Hummingbird. Yes, it is, said Tall Pine. It is very nice, agreed Spotted Beetle. Not boring at all, said Hummingbird. There they all are together, my friends. Can you help me in the book? Let's do it on the count of three. One, two, three. The end. That was Old Rock is Not Boring. We have several copies of this in our collection. You are welcome to put a copy on hold and read it together at home. In the back are some more facts about what we read about in the story. So some interesting things about dinosaurs and volcanoes. You can check those out with your grown up if you'd like. If you wanna put this on hold, you may, or you can also request a browser pack. You can just ask for any kind of cool books that are funny, things that are true. We have a huge section about dinosaurs in our collection. Just let us know what you would like with a browser pack and we can help you. That was Old Rock is Not Boring. All right. Next, I wanna teach you a game. Usually this is the time that we do a song, but I think there's a really fun game about rocks. Can you guess what I'm gonna teach you? This is a game called Rock, Paper, Scissors. So you make a rock like this with your fist, and a paper is flat, and then scissors like this, like you're cutting. And you'll have to find a grown-up or a brother or a sister or a friend to play with you. You can do this over Zoom or Google Meets if you're meeting for your classes virtually, but this is how you play. You hold one hand down flat, and you hold your other hand in a fist and you say rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And then without telling anyone what you're gonna do, you make either a rock, paper, or scissors. You ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. What did you make? If you made a rock on your screen, then your rock goes and my scissors break and you win. If you made scissors on your screen, then that was a tie. We both made scissors. If you made a paper with your hand in your house, then scissors would go ch -ch 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 to your paper and I would win. You wanna try it again? So the idea is that you could make all three of these things. Let's try again. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I made paper. <laughs> if you made a rock in your house, my flat paper will cover your rock and I would win. If you made a rock in your house, then that paper would cover. If you made a paper in your house, then we would tie. And if you made scissors in your house, 
you would cut up my paper. <laughs> so you can play that with your grown-ups at home. Rock, paper, scissors, and then you make one of those. You'll have to tell us in the comments who won at your house if you play rock, paper, scissors. So let's read one more story today. This one is called Snail Crossing. I love this story. It's by Corey Tabor. Snail Crossing, there he is. We have a lot of these in our collection too. So if you like the story after we read it, you can certainly put a copy of this one on hold too. One lucky day, Snail was out scooting around when he saw the most beautiful sight. Do you have any guesses about what the most beautiful sight would be for a snail? A field of plump, crisp cabbage just across the road. Well, you won't stop me, said Snail to the road. Do you see Snail over here? Here's our snail. He's gonna make it across the road to that cabbage. Snail had been traveling for some time when he decided to take a break. Why, I must be nearly there, thought Snail. Look, he's all the way at the start. He's not even close. He's gonna take a break though. He was watching the rumbling gray clouds when he felt something coming his way. What it was, Snail couldn't say. Some things are too big and fast for snails to ponder. What was it? A big blue truck. Well, you won't stop me, said Snail to the thing. Snail was cabbage bound. Do you know what that means? If you're cabbage bound, that means you're on your way to cabbage. Nothing could stand in his way. you you're standing in our way we've got a road to cross here yelled a troop of rowdy ants and they probably would have carried on like that if it hadn't started to rain it's raining rain cried the ants help 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 cabbage bound or not snail couldn't just leave them there Come in, said Snail, come in before you drown. He's gonna open up his shell and let them come in. Ooh, it's very dark. Remember, it's very dark in our book about the rock as well. Would you like some tea, asked the snail. Oh yes, that would be lovely. And then the ants heard a click sound and it was a light. Snail turned on the light in his shell and they all had tea. We're sorry about earlier, terribly sorry. Sometimes we get a bit antsy, said the ants. Oh, I know the feeling, said Snail, and he told them all about the plump, crisp cabbage just across the road. Hmm, said the ants, hmm. When the rain stopped, the ants said, thank you, thank you, thank you, and goodbye. Well, I hope you'll come back soon, said Snail. Count on it, said the ants, and off they went. Now, where was I, said Snail to himself. Ah, yes, Snail was cabbage bound. Remember, that means nothing could stand in his way. He looks very determined. Snail was scooting right across when he noticed something standing in his way. Lunch, said a hungry crow. Well, you won't eat me, said Snail. Can't you see I'm cabbage bound? Evasive maneuvers, evasive maneuvers. Do you know what that means? You try to run in a zigzag or a snail is scooting around in a circle to try to get away from the crow. Honk, honk. Oh, here comes another truck. This one's green or yellow. And just like that, the hungry crow was gone. Oh, the truck scared the crow away. Snail was so relieved, but also a little bit dizzy from all that spinning. Now look, this is the direction he started in when he was going across the road, and then he did his evasive maneuvers, and now which direction is he going in? Uh-oh. He's singing a song though. He's very excited. He says, cabbage bound, I'm cabbage bound, head in the clouds, foot 
on the ground. Snail scooted and scooted and scooted and hooray, he said, I've made it. But where was the cabbage? Snail looked to the left and he looked to the right. He doesn't see it. Oh no, said Snail. Look, he turned in a circle and went back the direction he came. Oh no. But what was on the horizon? The horizon we talked about in the rock book too. That's when you look out and you can see the sky meet the ground. So with your grown up, you can go outside and look to see if you can see the horizon. Sometimes when you're on a drive, you can look out the window and see the horizon too, if you can't see it from your house, but that's the horizon. So Snail looks on the horizon and what does he see? This cabbage, this head of cabbage and it's getting closer. Could it be? The cabbage was coming to Snail? How is that working? <gasps> Hooray, said Snail. And look who brought the cabbage. Those are friendly ants. Snail bound, we're snail bound, they say. So remember, Snail said he was cabbage bound. He was going toward the cabbage. And now the ants are saying, we're snail bound because they are bound for Snail. They're going toward Snail. Thank you, he said to the ants. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then the new friends went inside for cabbage soup and tea, and no one felt antsy at all. It's a cool story about friendship, huh? The snail helped the ants out by keeping them dry when it was raining, and the ants helped out the snail, and they brought him the head of cabbage. Okay, can you help me say the end? We'll do it on the count of three. One, two, three. The end. Great job. That book is called Snail Crossing. We have a lot of these in our collection too, if you'd like to place a copy on hold. Coming up on the 17th, we have Lego My Library at Home. There may still be spots for that. Um, we also have on the 25th, a Turkey Roundup program, where we'll have a make and take turkey craft and a story time. And then we have a sign and sing with Communication Junction. That's a sign language uh, story time that we do with Communication Junction. It's very fun. That's also on the 25th. We have lots more programs on the calendar too. Those are just a few. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.